Hey everyone, this is going to be the first of a three-part video series on the kinetic molecular theory. So the kinetic molecular theory is basically just a way for scientists to explain uh, why gases behave the way that they behave. So if you were to guess, or based on your prior knowledge, uh, explain uh, why gases behave the way that they behave and basically come up with a model for gas behavior, uh, what would you come up with? Well, if it were me, uh, based on my knowledge of all the different gas laws that I've, that I've uh, learned about, um, I would basically think uh, that gas particles are just kind of moving around on average they're pretty much they're pretty far apart from one another which is why gases have an uh, indefinite shape and an indefinite volume um, I would think that occasionally the gas particles are going to collide with other gas particles and also that occasionally gas particles are going to bounce off of the walls of their container uh, which is why we have the pressure of a gas remember the pressure of a gas that's the that comes from the sum of all those collisions between gas particles and the walls of their container. So this is basically just what the kinetic molecular theory says. Okay, you have these gas particles that are moving, you have collisions between particles, you have collisions between a particle and the container. So that's all the kinetic molecular theory really is. It's just a little bit deeper and a little bit more thorough than the way that I just described it. So remember, we've learned about quite a few uh, properties of gases, and we've learned about quite a few gas laws. For instance, we learned about Boyle's law, which governs the relationship between volume and the pressure of the gas, assuming you have a constant temperature and a constant amount. Uh, we've also talked about Charles's law, uh, which governs the relationship between volume and temperature if you keep the amount and the pressure constant. We've talked about Avogadro's law, uh, which governs the relationship between the amount of a gas and that gas's volume, assuming a constant temperature and pressure. Uh, we've talked about the ideal gas law, which is basically just like a summation of the three gas laws above. And then finally, we've discussed Dalton's law of partial pressures, which says that when you have a mixture of gases, the total pressure of that container is going to be equivalent to the sum of the, the individual partial pressures that each component exerts on the container of that mixture. <sighs> okay, so that was quite a mouthful. Uh, what do all of these things have in common? Well, they're all laws. They all end in the word law. And remember, scientific laws don't really explain anything. They don't really tell you why things happen the way they do. All they do is just summarize observations that have been made. In this case, all of these laws are just summarizing uh, observations that have been made about gases. So if we want to explain why these laws exist and why these gases behave the way that they do, we're going to need a theory. And the theory that can be used to explain uh, all of these scientific laws with gases is going to be the kinetic molecular theory. Okay, so what exactly is the kin kinetic molecular theory? Well, it's basically just the simplest model that we can, that we can uh, figure out that works reasonably well uh, to describe the behavior of gases. So under the kinetic molecular theory, the gas is basically modeled as a collection of particles, okay? And these particles are in constant motion. Furthermore, the particles are gonna move in a straight line until one of two things will happen. So the particles are gonna move in a straight line until the particle collides with another particle or the particle collides with the wall of the container. So again, just to, just to uh, recap, we got a collection of particles that are in constant motion. Each particle moves in a straight line until it slams into another particle or it slams into the wall of the container. Okay, and there are a couple of postulates of the kinetic molecular theory uh, that are pretty important and that we need to uh, make sure that we understand. So the first postulate of the kinetic molecular theory um, has to do with the size of a particle. So under the kinetic molecular theory, it is understood that the particles, the individual gas particles, don't occupy any volume, which kind of seems a little peculiar at first because we know that the particles have mass. So how can we assign zero volume if they have mass? Well, the reason why, the reason why the particles are assumed to have no volume is because the space that's in between the particles on average is much, much, much larger 
than the size of, a, of each individual particle. So because the space between those particles is so much larger than the size of any individual particle itself, uh, this approximation turns out to be uh, quite adequate most of the time. Now let's move on to the second postulate. The second postulate of the kinetic molecular theory um, has to do with kinetic energy and temperature of the uh, particles. So what is kinetic energy? Well, kinetic energy is just the energy that an object has due to its motion. So again, we just established that the particles are constantly moving, they are never at rest, and so they all have some uh, kinetic energy to them because they're all moving. And we're, the, the second postulate says that the uh, temperature in kelvins is going to be proportional to that average kinetic energy. Well, again, temperature is nothing more than just a measure of average kinetic energy. So it's pretty self-explanatory based on what we already know about energy. So uh, let me just make clear at this point that the kinetic molecular theory does not postulate that all the particles are moving around at the same speed, at the same velocity. Instead, what you get are some particles are moving around faster than others to the point where you get this distribution of speeds. You have a distribution of velocities. And this distribution is, uh, is known as the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. So on the x-axis of the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution, you have the velocity of, uh, of a particle. And then on the y-axis, you have probability density. So you're really saying, OK, how likely are you to be able to find a particle that's moving at this speed? And so again, some particles are moving really fast. Some particles are moving really slow. But there's one sort of average value. There's one sort of average speed uh, that you are most likely to find a particle moving around at. And that is related to kinetic energy by this equation right here. So if you've taken like a, uh, a physics one course, you've probably been familiar with this equation. It says that the kinetic energy is equal to one half times the mass times the velocity of the particle squared. So that means that not only does a particle moving fast have a high kinetic energy, but it also means that a particle that has a large mass also, have, uh, also has a large amount of kinetic energy. So in other words, if you have two gases that are at the same temperature, they're not going to have the same kinetic energy if they have different masses. In order for two gases to have the same temperature, the lighter gas particles have to be moving faster to have a higher kinetic energy. Okay, so I hope I didn't just confuse everybody there. It does get a little complicated, um, but it's just saying that the average energy due to the motion of the particles is directly proportional, which means as one goes up, the other goes up to the temperature of the particle in kelvins. So we're gonna talk about one more postulate before we wrap things up. The third postulate of the kinetic molecular theory states that collisions between particles are completely elastic. So what is a completely elastic collision? Well, suppose we have two billiard balls, and these two billiard balls are traveling towards one another, and then they sort of slam into one another. This would be like something that we would call an elastic collision. So basically what it means is that when the two particles collided with one another, no energy was lost in the form of heat. So in other words, the kinetic energy of both particles is the same before the collision as it is after the collision. None of that energy that those particles originally had due to their motion was lost to the surroundings in the form of heat. Now, so, this, so again, this is what we would call an elastic collision. Now, on the other hand, what if I had two lumps of mud? Notice we have a little worm coming out of each lump of mud. And, I, and what if I collided two lumps of mud with one another? Well, that would result in what we call an inelastic collision. Because again, when those mud balls slam into one another, they're gonna kind of they're gonna kind of warp around one another. And when they warp around and sort of scrape into one another, that's gonna cause uh, friction, which is going to release some heat. So these two uh, mud balls are actually going to lose some of their kinetic energy in the form of heat after the collision. So again, 
the elastic collision, like the billiard balls, is when the kinetic energy is the same before and after the collision, but an inelastic collision, like with the two mud balls, is one in which the kinetic energy of the particles is different before the collision than it is after the collision. Okay, so those are the three postulates of the kinetic molecular theory. I think this is uh, a good place to stop. Uh, in the next video, uh, we're going to talk about how the kinetic molecular theory can be used to describe and uh, basically explain, rather, um, all of those gas laws that we've looked at. So if you want to go ahead, uh, if you want to go ahead and skip to the next video, uh, go ahead and click the link that just appeared uh, right there. And um, hope to see you then. All right. So that's it. Goodbye.